Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to prepare your world for the Ashlands now that it has been released. The easiest problem to fix has to do with locations not showing up in the Ashlands. Some of you playing on a particularly old world will have the Ashlands terrain generate and the monsters show up, but there won't be any locations there. No dungeons or forts or whatever. Luckily for us, Iron Gate put a dev command in Valheim itself to address this issue, so you don't need to use mods to deal with it. All you need to do is have some patience and load up dev commands, enable them if you need to, and then use this command, gen lock. If you're playing on an old world, it's good to just use this after Ashlands comes out, okay? What's going to happen is your computer's going to freeze. Well, not your computer necessarily, but as you can see, Valheim itself is frozen right now. And eventually it'll start working again and everything will be totally smooth and back to normal. For me, it usually freezes for around a minute. This is going to make it so when you explore the new areas, they're going to have the locations now. So it's a good thing to run unless you have a reason not to run this command. The next problem has to do with if you explored the Ashlands or near the Ashlands before the update. Because you see these spike things here? These are actually an important gameplay mechanic for the Ashlands. And if you already explored the area fully, then the spikes won't necessarily generate properly. And that's a problem because it's part of the game. In addition to that, you'll have all sorts of weirdness like you're seeing behind me. This is from terrain that used to be here and was loaded into the game and locations. But then the height maps were changed on the release. And this led to a bunch of floating vegetation. And so I'll also show you how to fix this. Throughout this video, I'll be using the Valheim Map World tool to show you terrain and coordinates. This is the fastest way to debug because we can look at the affected areas and get their teleportation coordinates Im immediately. For now, let's look at how the Ashlands terrain itself changed with the update. This is how it looked before the update. We can see that the terrain is actually connected to the Ashlands. And there's not really anything inherently special about the Ashlands, aside from it being at the bottom of the map. It still has mountains and these little rivers and flat areas, etc. But in general, it's the same land generation as the rest of the map. However, when we look at the Ashlands on the actual map, we can see that it is totally changed. It's no longer connected to the other biomes there is a forced ocean layer. That means that we can use the old map to see where the problematic areas are. To illustrate this point, I'm going to take a screenshot of this map here, and now I'll start to highlight the areas. You can see that anywhere there was terrain bordering the Ashlands, that is going to be a problematic area. Now, if nobody explored these areas, then it won't matter because the vegetation was never generated in the first place. However, if somebody got even close to this area, it would have loaded all of the vegetation there. So you really should just manually check on a special character that you make to fix the world. You can waste a lot of time flying around in the world. It's huge, even with flying. So I encourage you to look for the exact affected area and then load it up. In this case, we're going to look at some mistlands. So here we are in the game in those mistlands. And the mistlands are really tricky because visibility is so low in the mistlands that they actually look normal without any terrain. But if we go further away, we can see that this is actually a problem. The, all these mistlands assets have spawned, and the problem is that almost all of them float. So it looks very jarring to find these areas to an actual player, right? Because if you try and explore them, it's just this very bizarre area. Like, look at all these roots, isn't this insane? But the further we get up the height map, we start to see all sorts of floating assets. And this is what's going to happen if you had explored the areas that were near the Ashlands. As we can see, that area generated properly. We get those spikes, which is our confirmation that it's working. 
Whereas this area, this is all backwards. And then if you go to the mountainous areas, it's even more intense. Look at all these floating rocks. It's like a canopy of floating rocks. Very, very trippy. The mountains almost keep a shell of their former silhouette. It's pretty cool. As trippy as this floating world is, it's actually quite easy to fix. As usual, Jerry Kusela has our backs with the Upgrade World mod. These instructions are going to completely reset the Ashlands, the Deep North, and also fix this vegetation issue. We'll be using the Zones Reset command, which is sort of like a uh, turn it back to default. Imagine you built up an area. If you use this command, gone. It resets it all back to as if nothing had ever happened. But we don't want to do that to our entire world, obviously. That would destroy everything. So this is where we're going to use the minimum distance command. The minimum distance command allows you to perform commands that are a certain distance from the center. But we need to find out exactly how many meters from the center we're looking at here. And this is where highlighting these zones came into play earlier. We can see that there's basically this area here, right? that we would need to clear. So now by looking at Valheim Map World, we can see the coordinates. These are in meters, but don't be tricked because it's not a perfect circle from the center. If you zoom out and you look at the map, you can see that the whole map is a perfect circle. But the Ashlands in the Deep North actually turn the circle into a eye structure instead of a circle. Our minimum distance from the center command is still in a perfect circle. So we have to keep this in mind. And the minimum distance I'm gonna use is negative 7200. The negative part doesn't matter because this is distance to center and I'm looking at a coordinate. So now we're gonna go 7200 for the min distance parameter. And now we have one more choice to make, which is whether we have any player bases to be concerned about, or if we just want to destroy everything. If we just want to reset everything and force it to be exactly how it needs to be, all you have to do is type force. However, let's say that you have some player bases that even with the height map changes might be affected and are still safe. Okay? You don't want to delete them this way. So you would just type the minimum distance command and then go enter. This is going to use the automatic player base detection, which is three safe zones of 64 square meters each. Okay? This is the confirmation phase, and it's really important here that you look at what it shows you, and if you don't like it, type stop. Do not type a new command, because if you don't tell it stop, then the next time you start, it's gonna fuse the commands together and do all sorts of nonsense. So always type stop if you don't use the command after the confirmation. That is really important, okay? That being said, we'll enter the command, and in this case, we have a player base around, so we want to preserve it. So I'm just going to use the regular one there. And now I'm going to go start. This is going to reset all of the areas back to default. <laughs> and it killed my character. And here we are. There's my body, showing I'm in the exact same place. And this just looks like a regular mountain, because everything is now set up properly. As you can see, even though this mountain is literally bordering on the Sea of the Ashlands itself, it's still generated properly and everything looks normal. And here is the nearby player base, and it's totally safe, even though it was within the resetted zone. And just in case you missed it earlier, it's really important on an old world to run the gen location command. This command will freeze your client for a little bit, but it will ensure that the Ashlands location show up properly. After your client freezes, it'll come back to life, and you may see some messages about failing to place things in old locations. Don't worry about that, that is normal. And that leaves two more problems that arise. So if you want to save your bases, I already made a video showing how to use plan build and do that. 
It takes longer than I want to include here, so I'm just going to reference you to this video if you have a base that's getting destroyed that you want to save. You have to preserve that file and never load it on the Ashlands, and then you'll use the plan build mod to save it. But then, that leaves us with one more kind of janky issue. If you go to the center of the world on an old world after the Ashlands update, well, the, the Ashlands boss stone gets just kind of squashed in there. As you can see, the others are all spaced out, right? But then the Ashlands one is just stuck right there. So I'm going to show you how to fix this. We're going to go up onto this hill here that's a vantage point, and we can see that in this particular situation, the boss heads are placed up to motor. Locations, reset, and then start temple. The beginning area is actually a location, and we're going to use the force command as well. There's only one of these in the whole game, so it'll be really fast, and then boom, look at that. It just reset all of them, and now it added an appropriate amount of space instead of just squeezing it in. This may seem nitpicky, but I, I don't know, it bothered me, so I found it cool that it's so easy to fix. Now we have the issue, though, of the first four boss heads. We need to replace them. We'll spawn the Eekther Trophy, the Bone Mass Trophy, the Elder Trophy, and the Dragon Queen Trophy. And there we go! We've now updated the starting temple, so it's more spacious. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you want to support my work, then consider renting your own Valheim server from Zap Hosting using my link, JP Valheim. You can check out this tutorial I have all about setting up your own server and managing it. I have a lot of content about managing dedicated Valheim servers. I personally find it to be a really integral part of my Valheim experience because the combination of managing the server allows me to make a Valheim experience that's more like an MMO. It feels like a world that's alive, other people are doing stuff, and I can log in and have a Valheim adventure in a world that feels more alive instead of a normal single player world or a multiplayer world that just is doomed to end up not having players. You can really create a more ideal experience for yourself and for other people. So I encourage you to check it out, whether you use my link or someone else's. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the Ashlands. It really looks like a blast, and I'm excited to experience it myself.